I keep making this mistake when it comes to monitors because why did I do this? Why did I run out there, ask for this monitor here? Because now I'm... Watch your boy C Kid here, man. Back with another video for y'all. Alright, so today's video, man, I'm hyped because I got in the Gigabyte Aorus CO49 DQ monitor. This bad boy in this box is a beast. Now, I got the chance to see this firsthand while I was out in Las Vegas at the CES convention this year. And uh, shout out to the good people over at Gigabyte for sending this over for me to get here on the channel to you guys. So I'm gonna be hooking this bad boy up to the PS5. We're gonna get some gaming going on. I'm just gonna give you guys my initial thoughts and impressions of this monitor and if I think this is something that's going to be worth you guys to even take a look at but this bad boy here we talking super ultra wide 49 inch OLED picture quality 144 hertz refresh rate 10 bit color two 2.1 HDMI ports one DP port three USB a ports USB C port two five watt speakers in this bad boy and a headphone jack but all in all man this thing has everything that I feel like you could ever want let's go ahead and get this bad boy unboxed we're gonna get it set up here behind me and we're gonna test out some gameplay let's go i don't know where grandma's scissors is at but we gonna slice this bad boy all the way across popped out of here there we go now hopefully i can unbox this bad boy without uh without messing nothing up we gonna take this out we don't need that it's the first thing it says here on the box it literally says do not open from this side but we got to figure out how to get this out the box okay that bad boy's heavy i'm struggling <laughs> all right whoo all right, we in there. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we get, we get a display port cable, HDMI cables here, power cables, USB-A port to activate those USB-A ports, some um, paperwork here, which we're not gonna read. We get our stand. This is gonna be our monitor stand. Now, I'm not sure 100% if I'm actually gonna be using the monitor stand. Most likely, I'll probably be mounting this because I do have a pretty heavy duty mount back there that should be able to support this, but if it doesn't, then I'll just be using the monitor stands. Pretty heavy duty, man. Definitely plastic here on the top. Underneath is solid metal for sure. And then this one here is gonna be the base here again. Has some metal there, pretty solid. All metal on the inside, but the outside is all plastic. And finally, we got the part that everybody's been waiting for, including myself. Man, it even smells new in here. If I can get it out of here. <laughs> See, man, I'm always struggling. There we go. All right, y'all, so here is the monitor in itself, man. Like I said, this is not a monitor for the week. So it is VESA mounted, so we do have the option to be able to Vessel mount this. All right, so just kind of going off of my initial impressions of this monitor, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. Like, this is a pretty large monitor, man. Like, I cannot wait to get COD playing on here, some Hell Divers too. I mean, like, I got just a list of games that I wanna play on here, man, that I think is just gonna look absolute fire. Let me kind of flip it down so you guys can see it. Back top here, we got some venting that's right up there up top. And then we also got all of our IO ports underneath. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy set up. Let's go. <laughs> y'all right, so it's been a couple days now man of me just kind of testing out this monitor here and just really putting it through its paces and as you guys can see here i got the monitor here all set up and everything behind me just like i wanted here within my space so i felt like let's just kind of start off with how i personally think it looks within a normal gaming setup to me y'all i'm vibing with it heavy y'all at first i'm not gonna lie to y'all i was kind of worried about like the size of it like is it gonna be too big for my space and the desk size that i have if you guys are interested in what i've kind of mounted it to it is a 76 inch desk it's a little over six feet and honestly man just kind of looking at it like i don't really think that i can go back to anything else other than a monitor this size like it looks so damn good in the setup like just wait till i get the pc in here y'all that's coming like it is ah. It's gonna be a whole vibe up in here, y'all. <laughs> so the first thing here I wanna kinda talk about, or I guess the next thing I wanna talk about is like the design of it and just kinda my overall thoughts around that. So there's a couple things that I like about it when it comes to the build quality, and then there's a couple things that, you know, I would actually like to see them actually improve on when it comes to the next gen. Now, when it comes to the materials, everything to me, y'all, it felt premium. Now, this was actually one of the first things that I noticed when I first took this bad boy out of the box. Like, to me, nothing felt cheap. Because I'm like, if it feels cheap, y'all already know me. I'm sending this bad boy, hey, mailman, come here. 
Send this bad boy back. <laughs> now, another thing that I like is the large vent placement on the top back of this monitor because this is going to be something that's going to help keep a large monitor like this cool. I mean, y'all can see it for yourself. Like, it's a lot of screen popping off back here. And you guys already know the more real estate that you have on the screen, the more heat that it's actually going to generate. So the fact that they included a larger uh, vent on the back placement of it, I thought was a W move. Now, you guys already know, man, I'm always going to keep it funky and I'm always keep it real with you guys, even though Gigabyte did send this out to me to get on the channel for you guys now there's one thing one design man that i would actually like to see them update for the next gen and that is the placement of the io ports like the hdmi display port headphone jack different things like that i don't really care for them being on the bottom but i actually would have preferred if they moved them directly to the back of the monitor for us to be able to plug in reason being is because when i actually plug in my hdmi cable from my ps5 slim that you guys see here behind me the plug or at least the cable actually hangs out from the bottom of it and kind of throws off the whole like clean minimum look that I was going for. Is it a big deal? Honestly, I would say that really depends on the type of person you are. But for me, I prefer if they just move that bad boy to directly being on the back. Now, one small design that I actually kind of like, and it is actually right underneath, there's a little light that actually shines from the power button that shines right onto your desk. And I think it's actually dope, even though it's real subtle and kind of low key, but it's nice that it's like this glow that kind of shines on your desk from your monitor. And then if it's in its resting state, it has like this orange kind of standby light, which is pretty much the same light color that you guys see on your ps5 when it's in its resting mode which to me i thought was a nice touch but overall i would say design wise i'm rocking with it now let's go ahead and get to it man let's talk about the one thing that i know you guys want to know about and that is picture quality for the price is it actually worth spending eleven hundred dollars on this bad boy now i'm not gonna sit up here and act like eleven hundred dollars ain't a whole lot of money because it is listen y'all that's a whole lot of scratch to dish out on a monitor now i'm not gonna lie to you guys now that i've played on it to me it is worth every single freaking penny well maybe let's talk about that i would say for me the monitor experience has been just an all-around positive experience when it comes to my personal gaming needs. But I think your experience also really truly comes down to the type of games that you like to play. Now, I do want to actually preference, this is coming from a PS5 console perspective gamer and not a PC gamer perspective just yet because PC is coming soon. So if you guys are a PC gamer, then I would say wait for me to kind of talk about that when I get my PC here all set up here on the channel because I got my first gaming PC ever from NZXT man that just came into the studio and I got some dope dope stuff plans for that bad boy man so just be on the lookout for all of that hit that subscribe button right now man because I got some fire coming y'all way but from a console perspective right if you guys are playing games like Call of Duty because I really wanted to test this out playing like fast-paced games like Kai with you know rebirth resurgence is coming back which that's out right now if you don't know now you know but it's running smooth man like i just felt like latency on it from a monitor perspective was very good and very much in real time and having that wider field of view man i feel like i can legit see every damn thing y'all like when i'm playing hell divers 2 like i can see androids before they even can see me like giving me to jump on them every single time because we got to do it for democracy y'all <laughs> for those that know you know what I'm talking about, you know, we're here. <laughs> and when it comes to graphics, right, and really getting that OLED, crispy, clean look, I felt like this monitor here delivered on that 1000%. But again, this really depends on the type of game that you, you know, you personally like to play and the graphics that's in that game. Because let me tell you, when I was playing this Gran Turismo and I got that playing right here behind me, that game looked ridiculously good. Like when I'm playing on it, like, it's so damn lifelike. It felt like when I was using, like, my tokens to buy cars into the game, I felt like I was buying a real car in real life. I legit had to check my bank account. <laughs> like, this is by far one of the best monitors that I've had in the studio so far. And as you guys can see from behind me, man, I'm already a huge fan of, like, curved monitors. I got these LG monitors here that I have, and I've been using these for years. And I even bought them, I think, during the pandemic time frame. And they've been working for me, man, from a productivity as well as a gaming perspective but now after actually trying this monitor here for a couple days man and really putting it through its paces besides like gaming on my oled tv i am a huge fan and a believer of this monitor here man like i need this monitor so gigabyte if you want to just you know let me keep this one just on good faith then you know just send the email say hey see kid you can keep it 
I'm here. <laughs> because I'm gonna be real with you guys, man. This is a loaner monitor. I do not get to keep this monitor here. Sadly, I know, sad face, you know, we're gonna go ahead and put it up here on the screen. Unless, you know, Gigabyte, if you wanna bless your boy with one, then, you know, like I said, I'm here. <laughs> so I would say, man, throughout all of the games that I played on it, whether it's a first person shooter game, a sports game, RPG style games, like I felt like it really held up really good, man. And I've been putting some hours in on this bad boy. Like I'm talking, you know, I get it in over here. <laughs> now, the next thing I want to kind of talk about right real quick, and that is just the size of it, because I really want you guys to understand the magnitude of what you guys are getting if you're looking at buying a monitor of this size, because I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is not a small monitor. We're talking 49 inches here, which is just next level to even think about so if you guys are thinking about a monitor like this you're definitely going to need a large gaming desk setup man for it to actually look right in your setup like i don't want to see nobody out here with the fisher price desk size and you got a 49 inch super ultra wide monitor on it like it's just not going to look right y'all so just make sure you got the desk space for it now let's go ahead and talk about some of the on-screen features that you guys get and how that experience has been for me right now for me the experience was smooth. Although I do wish, I do wish that this monitor here did come with some type of a small remote control just to be able to kind of access the monitor menu without having to like scoop my chair all the way up and then touch the monitor every single time. Because I'll be honest, I hate having to slide my chair up just to make like the slightest adjustments that I need to make to this monitor. So Gigabyte, if we can just get a remote control you know, that'll be dope. Now on the flip side of that, to be fair, for the most part, once you guys have all your settings set, really for the most part, you really don't have to go back into that menu setting that often, but I like all of the options that it do give you. But there is a lot in here, man, so I do wanna kinda highlight some of these that I'm glad that they have on here that I personally use the most. First one, right, is the different picture gaming profiles. I pretty much kept mine on HDR movie or HDR game, and you can see all the other ones that they have here. Now, movie to me just seemed like it gave me more of that cinematic gaming feel that I personally like, especially if you're playing games like Helldivers 2 because Man, I'm telling you, like that is one cinematic like movie type game. Like it is, put it on HDR movie, trust me, you can't go wrong. <laughs> oh, and one feature, I almost forgot. Like this is a feature here I haven't really seen on a whole lot of monitors out there and I'm not sure if this is something that's new, but I like it y'all and that is a gameplay counter. So basically it's a little counter that you have in the corner of your display that is either counting up or it's counting down. So let's say you guys say to yourself, you know, look, I'm only gonna be on the game for 20 minutes or so because you know, your wife or your girlfriend, your lady, you know, whatever, they're, you know, they rushing you off the game. So you can set a timer right there on the screen to either count up or count down to keep track of you not spending too much time on the game and you know so that way you can get out of the house go do something productive outside of just gaming so i really like that feature man and i can see that being used for even streaming right let's say you on stream and you're telling your chat hey we're we getting ready to game we're gonna do this for like 40 minutes and then we're gonna switch over to a new game like you can literally have that counter right there on the screen the possibilities are just endless with that counter and i like it so shout out to gigabyte for that now another thing that i thought was a useful thing and that is game assist dash Dashboard. Now, I will say this is a little bit more geared towards PC players, but you do get CPU as well as your GPU temperatures. You get your fan speeds, usage rates, which could all be solid for you guys to keep an eye out just for the health of your PC, which is probably something I'm going to be using when I get my PC here built. Now, another good one, man, is being able to see the frame rate, which is something I always toggle on just because I just want to make sure I'm hitting the frame rates that I'm expected to get. But overall, man, when it comes to the menu features on this monitor, I'm a fan of it, y'all. And the last thing I wanna talk about with you guys before we get up out of here, and that is the speakers. Now, this is one of those things where I was actually pretty freaking surprised and shocked by how good the speakers sounded on this monitor. <laughs>
Now y'all know me, man. If we're just gonna be real here for a second, like usually on monitors, right? Especially gaming monitors and TVs, usually the speakers are typically terrible, right? And I'm someone that I'm instantly gonna tell somebody, look, go immediately go get you some external speakers or even like a pair of gaming headphones, right? But for this monitor right here, I personally felt like this is a little bit different of a case. This is a feature that I like because right out of the box, if you guys are someone that just spent $1,100, and I told y'all, $1,100, man, that ain't cheap. There ain't no little money out here. And with this monitor here, you don't have to immediately run out and go spend more money on external speakers to be able to hook up to this monitor. And that's a huge, huge W to me, man. Saving money has always been my best friend. So the fact that I can save money with this monitor is a W, man. And to me, the sound quality was solid coming out of the box but if you guys don't necessarily want to do that and you still want to get something external i would say possibly pick up like a sound bar or again a pair of gaming headphones and you should be good to go but either way to me i think right out of the box the speakers on this bad boy right here sounded legit man and it's something that i like but overall man this is a monitor that is definitely something that i feel like you guys should consider if you guys are in the market into stepping into this oled monitor space and again i get it the OLED monitor gaming space is not a cheap market, but it is something that I feel like is a fast growing space when it comes to gaming monitors. And Gigabyte with the Aoris here has entered the chat with this bad boy. And to be honest, I feel like they've started off with a great start. Now, is it perfect? No, I wouldn't necessarily say it's perfect by any means because there are some little things that I mentioned in this video that I would like to see them improve on for the next gen, but I would say that I would still strongly consider having this in my space personally. Now, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention that there are some other options that you guys possibly should check out, and that's also the Samsung Odyssey G9, which is also a 49-inch monitor, which is 1440p display at 240 hertz versus the 144 hertz you get with this one. Then there's also the one that I personally feel is kind of like a better bang for your buck, and that is the LG Ultra Gear 45-inch OLED curved monitor with a 1440p display at also 240 hertz. Now, I'm not saying this isn't a great monitor, Monitor here to consider because it is but just keep in mind that there are also other options out there that somewhat gives you the same resolution with similar screen sizes but higher refresh rates for either the same price or maybe a little cheaper which will give you smooth gameplay if you guys are on pc and just kind of give you that extra room to expand on but if you guys are a console player then honestly it really wouldn't matter because you pretty much capped out at 120 hertz anyway but if you guys are on pc and you got a solid enough build with high-end graphics cards and all of the sauce in your pc then i would say you might want to explore this monitor or other monitors with higher refresh rates to be able to get even even smoother gameplay quality uh, for just a little bit more. But yeah, man, I hope you guys found value in this video. If you did and you vibe with what I got going on over here, man, go ahead and hit that like button down below, man. If you guys are new here, click on that subscribe button right now, man, and join the family because the goal is to hit 200,000 subscribers, y'all, by the end of this year, man. Wouldn't it be crazy to gain 100,000 subscribers in one freaking year? Like, it's just wild, y'all. But with y'all help, I know we can get there, man. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now, man, and join the family. Thanks again for watching, man. I'll see y'all in the next one, squad. We out. <laughs> I'm about to, uh, you know, get back on the sticks. Let's go. <laughs>